So Tailwind version 4 beta is now available as you can see on my screen and this is a huge thing because of course Tailwind itself is a huge thing. A lot of people from a lot of companies from OpenAI to us like you know the whole spectrum of companies uses Tailwind. We use Tailwind in production, love it. A lot of developers use Tailwind in production and this means a big thing right. So what this means is that there are a new couple of new docs also, which I'll go into. But most importantly, a three, four, like a few highlights of this version release is built for performance, which is, by the way, I agree, this was something which is required. We actually run a patched version of Tailwind CSS in our front-end mono repo because I don't know what, what they have exactly solved in this case, but one of the things which they were using was their glob expression was very heavy, which was like reading the files. Let me find if I can show you, let me see if I can show you our patched version. I myself wrote the patch for this, so I know like it was a problem. Yeah, so you can see over here, this is just the patch file I'm, I have opened. I'm not opening every other file over here, just to make it simple. You can see the way we have patched it right now is that in our case, we just completely bypass the glob thing, right? So what you would, this file, basically what this file is, let me also open this file real quick so that you can understand what's going on. So you see, this is this is the part which I had patched. I think it's very old, it's almost six months old. So you can see like it has been a while, but this path was, it literally made like at least 10x faster to run Tailwind in our mono repo because it was using, like it was parsing it as a glob and then it was trying to return, you know, all the patterns. And in a lot of our cases, we did not use the glob system by Tailwind. So we were just passing it directly. But anyway, like coming back to this, I don't fully remember the context of this also, but hoping that this patch is not no longer required in Tailwind version four. Then there is unified tool chain import handling, vendor prefixing, a few things here and there, CSS first configuration. So the configuration file now resides within your CSS instead of JavaScript, which is going to be interesting as we see, and then design for modern web, right? So a few more features, which only CSS can solve. So if you look at Tailwind CSS version four, it has pre-release documentation. This is not final documentation I'm assuming. So there would be more documentation updates here and there. So things like that would be there. But as usual, they recommend you to start with wheat and inside wheat.config.ts, you add a Tailwind CSS as a plugin, right? So now you can see that clearly there is no tailwind.config file over here. So this is one thing where it's going like zero config sort of in a way where you just import Tailwind CSS and it should start working directly. You can have post CSS as well. So you can have that. And then finally you have to add CSS to make it start working. You can do this from CLI also. And there are some code mods. I think this is a code mod which is available. Yeah, but you can see the real gains are over here in performance engine. Tailwind CSS v4 is a ground up rewrite of the framework, taking everything we have learned about architecture over the years and optimizing it to be as fast as possible, which is something you would 100% want when you're working with a huge front end mono repo, like in our case, because these times means a lot. Like, you know, when things are freshing faster and things are working snappier, it makes it very easy and and enjoyable to develop front-end applications also. So you can see full build has dropped from 378 ms to 100 ms. Incremental rebuild with, a new, with new CSS has dropped by almost 10 times and no CSS has dropped by 182 times, which is, which is not a sort of improvement which you usually get to see, right? So if you're seeing an improvement like this, chances are probably that you were doing something very wrong earlier, right? So a general rule of thumb is that, you know, if you are seeing improvements 10x, maybe 20x, that means you did something great this time. And if you're seeing improvements north of 100x, then you probably did something bad last time, right? So anyway, the biggest thing over here you can see is that CSS first configuration has become the mainstream thing now. So one of the biggest changes in Tailwind CSS version four is the shift from configuring your project in JavaScript to configuring it in CSS, right? Now, instead of a config.js file, you can configure all of your customizations directly in the CSS. Now, I am not sure if I agree or if I would like this in general, because JavaScript brings a sort of comfort in flexibility and in power, the things you can do, you know, the logic you can run. CSS, of course, is powerful, but it's not something where, you know, you can just start an if condition, do this, otherwise do that. And sometimes, I'm not saying always, but sometimes those things are helpful in a configuration file, right? So yeah, this is a change which probably would be good for most people, but for some people who have 
created like a smart configuration file based on you know putting out some values from environment variables and something they would probably have to do some refactoring so there is a full css configuration documentation within this blog post over here which we would get into everything basically in tailwind version 4 is sort of working as you know you can think of it working as a css variable right so variables in css are very powerful so instead of like trying to do a lot of configuration with javascript files he's Tailwind is just taking that out where it's just giving you the option to configure everything via variables in CSS instead. Now you can see that Tailwind also takes a bold approach over here and it starts to use real CSS cascade layers, which is a feature which you can see it's compatible in like almost every major browser, but it is still relatively new. When we talk about in web terms, you can see that it's in available from Chrome 99, which was released in 2022, right? web is very old so if you're using tailwind on a website that you need to support chrome 98 or maybe like you know some sort of older browser version v4 probably is not a good choice right because if we go ahead and actually just take a look at can i use.com as well and if i add layer which is the css rule you can see that you know it's the global usage is still at 94 percent right so you're deliberately dropping out six percent of users if you're using i mean you might not use this but if you're using something like this so this is like the output right not how you would write tailwind itself but the output file generally generated by Tailwind itself, right? So which is likely going to break all these browsers, right? Which you're seeing, Internet Explorer specifically. I mean, that's, that's expected, but yeah, something to be aware about. So you can see that one of the things which you had to configure earlier was this content array in tail tailwind configuration which they have obviously the configuration file is removed so this value is also removed so they have like a built-in heuristics engine now which is great um, thank you so much for that which reads all the git ignores i'm assuming in mono repos and nested git ignores also and if you still want to like force build something you can have this right within the css itself again a bold move but if this was a javascript configuration i would be slightly more comfortable writing paths or you know making use of something like path.join for example let's say if this doesn't work for any reason then i can with javascript at least i can probably look into like what exactly is the path by doing path dot resolve and then printing this thing and figuring out or maybe just creating the full absolute path but yeah i mean it's probably a matter of just preference that we have worked with tailwind config so much in the past that it seems like impossible to just work into a css configuration file but sure let's take a look so some of the things which you will do with post css is like processing imports transpilation auto prefixer this is this was like a standard boilerplate setup right if you have used tailwind you would know like when you're copying pasting this code things like these exist well that's no longer required because tailwind brings its own pre-processing of css now with light CSS which handles vendor prefixes and so on also they have opened up a little bit so they are not locking down the columns for example or things anymore for example if you have used tailwind you know like you know you can use mx-1 for margin then two three four five six and after some point it starts to skip numbers right based on the tokens or you know design system which you are following but you would not have for example mx-41 well what they are saying now is that that is available that is possible so you don't have need to configure it uh, like you know as dynamically in square arrays square brackets it would just work which is great which is something which we do for a higher value systems of course like it has its own cons because the reason it existed in the first place was that so that you know there is a system which you can follow but a lot of times you need to escape out of it so that's that's good to see then you can also finally specify the spacing right so historically it always has been 0.25 rems but you can do it for example you can just say it one pixel now what this would mean is that if you're writing px-1 now so that would mean a margin or a padding of one pixel on either side which is great but obviously this would not be the case for any existing project if you're upgrading to tailwind css version 4 you would probably want to keep the same thing otherwise your whole website would just blow up then the color palette has been switched to rgb to this color scheme i won't pretend to know a lot about colors in general but it seems like that you know if you read about this you would see that this has a wider spectrum of colors available right so you can probably make much brighter or you know i won't say different sort of colors but i'll probably have like wider spectrum of colors which you can display on the web right so now you have support for container queries also which is a very interesting thing in css which sort of looks acts like media queries but for within the containers within your website widths itself 
itself that's great then there are a bunch of new css utilities which you should try out scale translate perspective for 3d um, stuffs then you have you know linear gradient angles again some of the utilities these are like new things which are there and it really depends on your use case specifically what you would want all of this by the way is like obviously achievable in css normal css also but if you want to do it in tailwind now you have ways right then you have inset shadows and rings which is also great you know a button like this you would have seen on some of the websites this is something now you can create within tailwind with inset inset shadow so i remember the time when i think uh, it was it shadows the drop shadow or text shadow i don't remember but tailwind did not support that right and then from that point it added support for shadows now we are at inset shadows also so it's it has come a long way right so i'm assuming with all these updates all these new things which are there it would also make a lot of sense for tailwind ui to get an update with all the new components and pages and so on and a lot of other people who build utilities and components on top of tailwind and maintain and sell them so it's like it's a good time to create a new set of components right we're using some of the best practices which tailwind is now bringing again with the utilities it offers i mean there is so much to learn in css in general and tailwind obviously increases that learning scope a lot because it brings its own flavor its own variation of how you can write CSS, right? So it's great. I mean, it starts with very small surface area in terms of what you need to learn to get started. And you can probably go a very long way just with that. If you look at Fermion, for example, Fermion is completely built on Tailwind itself, this landing page itself as well, as well as if you go to, you know, instructor dashboard of Fermion just to check out how the instructor side of things look like. So all of these widgets, all of the analytics you see over here, everything you see over here is tailwind right so you can go a long way with just basic tailwind utilities as well but it's great it's it's a great piece of technology there are some people who like most people are polarized about it either they like it or either they don't but i am 100 percent on somebody who has made my life a lot easier and better using tailwind instead of just css modules or even like raw css so you can still use javascript config this is something which i just discovered at the end of the article it's just not not detected automatically right so you'll have to import the javascript config from css as a you know as a sort of a directive it's not doing anything in the css world obviously but it's read by tailwind's cli then and it just uses that so i mean probably something we would use because i'll have to check how much javascript config we have for tailwind in our code base but i'll leave all these links in the description do let me know in the comments what do you think about tailwind version 4 that is all for this one if you like this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next video very soon